have to give a presentation about how a senior event advisor checks the map of an um, IOF high level event. And today that senior event advisor will be me. And I uh, have some experience as uh, SEA, as you can see here, and also some uh, tasks at, uh, as um, national controller in Norway. And I guess it's my controlling of the uh, World Cup this spring uh, that is the reason uh, the Futo Commission asked me to hold this pre presentation because I uh, gave some uh, expressions of uh, frustration uh, <clears throat> to the rules and um, what was valid or not uh, concerning mapping or map controlling. How a senior event advisor checks the map, that is by far already given the answer for that, because there's a document called the Event Advisor Checklist for Controlling Maps, uh, which you can find um, far down on the mapping pages at um, OF. And so it's not so um, big need to go through that document, it's good. Um, but as uh, already said, that uh, the FUTO Commission asked me to talk about rules and guidelines. And I would do that. I would try to have a systematic look at the rules and guidelines. And I will follow up with um, in kind of kind of chronological order um, the um, map checking process. And um, when I'm in these uh, experiences and questions uh, section, then you will find the text in green. <clears throat> when I prepared for start starting preparing for this uh, presentation, I had a big question mark and to what is valid and not, or not. And I still have a big question mark. I think it, it's not easy to find out on the web pages what, what is, which documents are valid and which are not. I will come back to that. But that is kind of the story behind this presentation too. Uh, as you can see, I have been SEA on several competitions, but I still not sure which um, guidelines or manuals and so on um, that are valid. I have started um, to see, have a look at the competition rules. I hope that's the right starting point for a presentation or a systematic uh, look through what is uh, valid. <clears throat> uh, in paragraph 2.1, it stated that these rules are binding for among them high level events. And in the same paragraph, it stated that these rules together with the appendixes are valid. In 2.10, we can see that Council decided special rules must be followed. And in 2.12, uh, IOF manuals must be followed. And I could see that there are there are four more paragraphs where map topic uh, um, or map related uh, issues are mentioned. Uh, I will come have a closer look at this on the next next slide. So these are the paragraphs in the rules which I could find concerning map checking. Um, and we have to go also to the through the appendixes and are there any special rules and which manuals are valid. A small closer look at it, a very quick one. Um, in the appendixes, I could only find in appendix two something about map, and that is only that you have to map accurately in the vicinity of the controls. The council decided special rules. I, I think it's hard to find 
of Bissor, which which are the council decided special rules. It doesn't show on the pages which documents are council decided or not. But in this paragraph, 210, then ISOM, ISPROM, and control descriptions, they are named as examples of council decided special rules. So, so they are valid at least. And in both ISOM and ISPROM, you can see on page two that they are decided by a council, but in the control descriptions, uh, I couldn't find anything about that. This is a con council decided uh, rules. So what are the manuals that we have to follow? I'm not sure if I have found the right one, but the first four ones here are to be found at the mapping pages. And the last one is the the event overview to section 22 is about maps and um, it's uh, written on the pages that event overview tool is manual. So I think that is clear that um, if you read it <laughs> as it's pre presented on the pages, then this tool is uh, one of the manuals that you must follow. We have um, in paragraph 11.2, it's just uh, said that you should put on a model event. I come slightly back to that. Um, in 15.1, the it's of course ISOM and ISPROM has to be followed. And um, in 15.4, there's a special rule about map pro protection, protected, protected against moisture and damage. And in 31.8 is just that uh, when you are an SEA, you should uh, have a look at the map that uh, conforms with the standards. So this is a brief look through the, the rules and guidelines. So now over to a more um, chronological order of what I do when I check maps. Mm. The first one is that I should check that the map is mapped according to ISOM or ISPROM. And that's a very big challenge because we always have professional mappers. And I'm not a mapper. I'm very fond of maps. I have a big interest in maps, but I'm non-professional. And I am to tell the professional mapper how to do his or her work. So I spent quite some time to or energy to have a good communication with the mapper and that's very important that i achieve that i haven't succeeded always there have been problems uh, in the communication but also i have succeeded and that's very good when i succeed in that um so i try to agree with the mapper very early before the map is drawn, how how shall, shall you, which assessments shall you do out in the terrain? Uh, so it's looking more like a international standard map than a national traditional map because many countries have their national traditions, and that is one of the things that I have to break through that there is an international map. At least for me, yes, that was a challenge. Maybe it's better now. But early, before the mapper goes out in the forest, you should have this uh, communication with the mapper. And um, it is uh, not always possible to do that because we are uh, appointed uh, a bit late as uh, SEAs, so the mapping process have started before you or I come into the picture. When, uh, when I come into the picture as an SEA, the competition areas are uh, usually appointed or decided. 
that this uh, area for model event in this uh, 11.2, it's a rule that you shall put on a model event to demonstrate the terrain. And then early, I try to agree with the organizers which area to choose for this uh, model event. So that's a discussion that comes early and make sure that they will have the same mapper or mappers as for the competition maps. And it's many times we, we forget to concentrate about the, uh, the, the model event map. That's not very smart because this map is very carefully looked at um, by the teams, the runners. So we, you will have a lot of questions if the model event map is, is not as good as it shall be. Then I encourage the, the organizers to have a preprint of, of a map to have a full scale print test a long time prior to the event, use the exact same print machines, ink and paper for the test race as for the event. I'm sorry to say that we have had several examples of bad and weak prints last years. So we have to do this um, check to be, be, be sure that the competition map is in the, in the shape we want it to be. And if it's not um, wet when you test this um, in a competition, then you should do it maybe in the laundry if needed. I, I know several persons have done that to check the colors that uh, stay on the paper and so on. Then I come to the map checking, which um, is according to ISOM and NISPROM. Um, I give a priority to possible routes and uh, the control su surroundings as it's written in Appendix 2. <clears throat> and I am not afraid to give comments and detailed feedback, but I always try to be open-minded. Uh, many of my comments will be followed by a question mark. I'm not sure if you, this is right, but to my opinion, maybe that boulder shouldn't be there. Like, Comments like that it's need to be humble about uh, this mapping uh, thing because what I think is right isn't always right in this in this matter. Um, so this is a system I use. I, I use the um, OCAD uh, usually and. Uh, point out some uh, places in the, in the map and uh, an Excel file telling what, why have I marked um, something here and something there. And I, for a sprint competition maps, I, this is from uh, Boudos, where I used Google View, the first map check. As I, uh, I was back home in Norway and did a lot of checking with Google View, and then I could go down after some months to see how the mapping ha have been. And I think it's a good tip to um, communicate through one advisor. There are several course setters and often also uh, more advisors involved, and then the mapper will get many different um, comments to the map and to make them not to be to watch it or other i don't know the word but um so it's easier for the um, for the mapper to have just through one channel channel then we Closing to the controls and uh, to the event, and the um, controls uh, are beginning to be on spot, and you need to check the control descriptions. And um, this example here is um, is very good from the book in 2022 uh, because. 
control descriptions should be kept as short and, and simple as is necessary to locate the control. I think that is what I have to remind the course setters about um, rather often that I put very much information which is not needed uh, in these descriptions. This is good, as I said, but you can see on control 12, there's a cliff and they have put it uh, to be 2.0 meter high. I, I don't know the situation on this map, but maybe they also could cut that one because two meter high cliff is just the height you expect the cliff to be. So if it's low or if it's very high, then you should put the meters in there. And six months um, ahead of the competitions, there should be a technical desk review of, of the map, which is um, in, in a document called control, written wrong here, control process of the mapping for major IOF events. It's a document you can find on the mapping pages. Um, is, is instructions how to perform this technical desk review, correct symbols, correct colors, correct sizes of the objects, co gaps between the objects, and so on. This is a very good procedure, um, and um, I think it has increased the quality of the maps the uh, last years. But you should map commission, rename it because. The, the title of this document looks like it to be just the whole um, uh, what I am talking about. How do you perform the, the control process or map? This is a technical desk review, so you should have that in the title. And uh, this um, this procedure is also referred to from this event uh, overview tool. I love this ev event overview tool. As I said, each time I succeed finding it because you can see the path where to go to find it. So I think there's many things we could do on the design of our web pages. When I also refer, refer to documents on the mapping pages, you have to go far down on this map uh, mapping page. The first one you see is uh, the um, ISOM, and then you can see old ISOMs and ISOMs in different languages, and it takes a very uh, long time to reload when you go down this uh, <coughs> on these pages. So it, it's not very uh, nice. And uh, for us who regularly work with this, we know where, where it is, but organizers uh, come into this just to have one event they are not um, familiar with the, our pages so it's i think it should be redesigned the last check no not the last but one of the last checks is uh, to check the course files and remember that the purple layer is not part of the um, technical map uh, check by map commission. So you have to uh, have a careful look on the purple layer before it's printed. Uh, and again, I'm not afraid to give uh, many comments and detailed feedbacks. Um, very often I, I do more cutting of rings and lines than course setters. Uh, uh, proposed to do. I check uh, placement of controls, control codes, my minimum sizes, and so on. I have to rush through because I'm, I know <laughs> I'm a bit out of time here. Um, then when the maps are printed, uh, then I, I emphasize the, to the organizers that it's important to check even um, printing offices that are used to print orienteering maps. Be present with a skilled person. 
the person should check the colors of the map using the test sheet um, that is presented through the web pages is is not written anywhere any place where you can get them but uh, i guess you can manage that uh, and to check that the the colors are right on the um, the printed maps and also check how rejected maps are treated so they don't uh, have competition maps out in the garbage I have some questions to this um, this printing because there's a document called uh, IOF Color Appendix A4 September 2022. That is what is named on the mapping uh, pages. In ISOM, this same document is called IOF Map Specifications Printing and Color Definitions, which also should be the name here. And in this uh, document, it's uh, written that the um, demand and method for printing method for uh, 15,000 maps is SMIC plus B. And the same method is strongly recommended for 10,000 maps. I, I don't understand why it's demanded to use this me method when uh, PMS, as far as I know, still is the, gives the best quality. I know it's practical and many printing offices uses this SMIC plus B and that is also a good method, but PMS, I think it's better and why is it demanded to, to use something that is a bit less good. And also on the mapping pages, we find a document called Certification of Print Suppliers 2021-2022. This certification system had good intentions, but I guess it was hard to organize. And when I say it like this, it's because um, when we prepared for this World Cup uh, this spring, we got the message from the MAP Commission that the system had collapsed. But why is it then still to be found at the mapping pages? The last check is to check um, the, the printed and prepared maps. And I check every single prepared competition maps. All maps the runners will have in their hand will be checked by me. I check that the plastic bags are properly sealed. Is it the right colors on the maps? Is the purple layer in the right position? Does the bib number correspond to the right map when the, there's relay and splitting method? And is it the right control descriptions on the map? So this is, I think, important. And I have uh, really found some uh, mistakes, which I, has been very good to uh, do this. The map check. And at last, there's, I don't think there are any rules about warm up and cool down maps, but it's nice to offer both warm up and cool down maps. And the warm up maps should be in the same scale as the competition map, even if then you end up with a very small paper sheet. It's, uh, it's good to have, or it should be the same scale. And the cool down map can be anything as uh, shown here from World Cup uh, this spring, where we used an aerial photo. It's uh, handsome to have to, to tell the runners where to be after uh, or at the arena. And there's no print or paper quality required to these warm up and cool down maps. Uh, as long as the, the teams are informed about the qualities, it will be okay, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought I was to the end. So, yeah, I am. But uh, as I said, I, I still am um, not sure if I have found all the right special rules 
did I find the manuals? And rules, we, we are talking about rules and guidelines. Which, which are the guidelines? Is it the manuals? Is it, yeah, I'm not sure. Still a big, or a question mark at least. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Chell. And uh, uh, just uh, as a side note, um, I had a privilege to work with Chell last uh, spring in, in Norway there. So uh, I think we are ready for a couple of questions. Uh, please raise your hand if you have any question or comments. Good, please go ahead. I just want to ask uh, Jean-Pierre, what is his opinion on OCAD uh, uh, lightest version map eligibility check function, which 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 can identify those minimum distance issues and some other issues. Uh, it happens quite often, especially for the mappers who doesn't use these checks beforehand, that I receive the world ranking event map with uh, thousand, up to 1,000 or 4,000 issues identified by this automated check but, but how should i act in such situations maybe then pierre can give some some advice or some comments how how to deal with it or do we have to deal with it at all maybe we just ignore it thank you yeah <clears throat> uh, probably jean philippe can uh, answer this after his own presentation would that be possible No problem. I'm fine with it. Thank or if you if, if if you think it's it's appropriate, John Philippe, just go ahead. No, I I think it will it will be fine after the presentation. Then I don't see any other uh, comments here. Uh, so uh, please go ahead.